Hi, everyone. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Uh, today, I'll be channeling Theos. And in the room, we have Steve, Stephanie, Sal Salem, Salish, Paola, Michelle, Don, and Christine. And uh, if you are watching in the YouTube chat, we have some room in the Google Plus room, so you're welcome to come in. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about light workers. I know that that's what Theos wants to talk about um, very much. Uh, they usually don't give me a heads up. Uh, beforehand what they want to speak about, but they were very clear that that's what they wanted to talk about. So that's why the post was calling all light workers. They want to take questions about uh, what's happening with your with, with your mission. Do you know what your mission is? How do you find your mission? Get started. Any problems you're having with that? So that's what they're going to be really open to. But before we start, I just want to remind you this is the Human Colony uh, Saturday webinar. If you would like to be a member of Human Colony, you get a lot of nice uh, pre-information on all of our webinars that we have. You're always guaranteed a spot in the room uh, when Jim Charles is uh, when he is channeling on his Saturday webinars, his are always paid webinars. And you also get first information on all of the nice things going on. In the coming weeks, we're gonna have a new roster of classes and all kinds of things that can be participated in. Things like Galactic Reiki, uh, how to channel, uh, intuition classes, and things to help you with your expansion. So be watching the website, which is hukalo.org, and you can you can find it all there. Also, if you'd like to become a member of Human Colony, you can sign up there. And then someone's beeping me. And then also on the 16th through the 21st of August, we have the uh, Human Colony Workshop, or the Hukalo Workshop, that'll take place in New York. The cost of that is $400, and it will include channelings every day with Jim and Max, as well as all kinds of nice uh, classes. Again, Galactic Reiki and learning to channel. So be sure to go if you feel called. Ask yourself if there's still time to sign up. But that will be August 21st, or August 16th through the 21st. OK, so <laughs> uh, Don will be taking questions in the chat. When I go into uh, my uh, trance, I won't be reading. So Don will be handling the questions in the chat and uh, also watching the YouTube. So if you have questions on YouTube, you can also post them. So everybody, hi. Uh, it was, uh, Salish, or Salem asked me a question. He wanted to know a little bit about Theos. So I just want to give a little introduction about who I am because it's been a while since I've channeled on uh, Human Colony, and maybe someone has never seen me or heard me. They've seen me hosting, but they didn't know that I was a channel, or they don't know really what I channel about. So I'll just give you a little bit of background. Um, I started uh, having communication with my guides, which I call Theos, and that's what they identified themselves to be. Uh, when I was just a little girl, I was about five years old, and I had a really big desire to have a connection. I wanted to know who God was. I wanted to know all about why I was here and all the things. And I was very um, interested to, to have that connection. Uh, I was told by, you know, everybody around me, well, God doesn't talk to anybody and, and things like that. And I thought that was really silly. I thought, well, how is it possible that there's this big giant God that can do everything and build a world, but he can't talk to people. He can hear you, but he's not going to talk to you. So that to me just didn't seem right. And I was uh, really asking constantly, you know, why won't you talk to me? Where, where are you? Why are, you know, why are we here? W what are we supposed to do? And why won't you talk to me? And I was really insistent. And at one moment, um, and I, and I have to be honest, I'm not sure what came first, but it happened at around the same time. Um, I had a near death experience. I died, uh, in a pool uh, and I drowned. And then, uh, as I was revived, I, uh, I came out with this sort of wanting to have this, you know, connection to God. So, um, I don't know if that started really before that, but definitely after that, it was very, very strong. And, um, at one moment I, I got my connection. I heard we are here and we love you. And from there, I, just began to be taught by them. 
Um, they taught me all kinds of principles, things like um, the first thing they taught me that was significant, and I, the reason it was significant is because I'm, I'm 51 years old. So this was around 1972, uh, 73. No one was talking about it, but they taught me a concept called all time at the same time. They said that everything happened at once, that all time was only now, that there was nothing more than it. And they showed me this big, uh, in my mind, they showed me a big uh, comic strip and they showed me little blocks of moments. And they said, that's how time is. Everything's compartmentalized in these small moments. And you can literally jump from moment to moment. And they said, but it's all already there. It's all there. And they called it all time at the same time. And you know, that's pretty significant because they didn't really start talking about that in quantum physics or anything. Maybe they were talking about it a little later, but I didn't hear it when I was six years old. But that's what I always called it. And as I grew up, I, I found out that that was something that was true. They also told me that when I would walk into a room, everything would appear. But when I would leave the room, it was gone. And so I had this idea that the world unfolded as I moved through it and then it sort of would disappear as I wasn't there. And, and that's also something that is true that whatever we put attention on is, is real. But in the same time as we're walking through this sort of matrix, you know, it's not real. So I learned concepts like that. And, and as I grew up, um, my definition of them changed as I as my understanding grew and as my ability to comprehend grew and they told me very early that the most important thing was love and to love everyone that everyone was really just me and that it was me in a different costume it was me in a different uh, yeah in a different they didn't use the word incarnation they just said it was me in a different form that everyone was, and not only everyone, but everything, literally everything was me. Now, I would say that to people, and I think I said it to my mom, and she said that sounded very sort of egotistical and arrogant to think that everything was me. But I didn't know what they meant, really. I just accepted. They said everything is me. I thought, okay, that's me as a dog. That's me as a house. That's me as a tree. And um, yeah, I had that very strongly growing up. So later on, they started talking to me about oneness and that, that we are all one when that's the everything is me idea. And uh, it evolved. And then I got really into uh, Hinduism and I started studying the Vedic texts. And in there, I started to see a lot of the stuff that I had been taught. And I started to really understand these concepts because I had, I had heard them before. And then when I started really learning um, the Vedas and the, you know, the things like the Gita and all that stuff, I, I really started to find these truths that I knew. And so for me, that started my journey really into, into that. And then uh, in around 2012, um, I had a radio show at that time. It was called About Oneness, and I was interviewing all kinds of different people. I had a friend who um, came to me, had been one of my first teachers, and she said to me, I thought, she said, I'm surprised you're not a channel. And at that point, I'd been listening to Esther Hicks for many years, um, and I think about five years at that point. And, and I just said, I, I, I don't want to be a channel. There's no reason to be a channel. Now, up until this point, Theos didn't have a name. They were just my guides, my knowing, my God, my, you know, that. And, uh, and, and I thought, well, why would I even want to channel? Who would I channel? What would I talk about? And she said, I just have this feeling to tell you that maybe you should think about it. So we went through that big change in 2012, if everyone remembers. And about that time, um, Theo said to me, uh, do you want to know our name? And I, and I was like, oh, you have a name? And I was sort of instantly embarrassed because I did, never thought about them having a name or any sort of beingness outside of being sort of my inner voice, my inner knowing. And I didn't think about them as being anything more than that. And so 
I, I said, yes, of course, what is the name? And um, they said, it's Theos. And, and they said, we've picked that name for you, um, for your understanding, for, for what you want to know. And as I, as I started to explore what that name, name meant, it means God, it means knowledge of God. And what they have always shared with me is that sort of knowledge. So I accepted it as that. And as I asked them, you know, where are you, you know, are, are you in a place? Are you on a planet? And, and I've never had a big uh, um, connection to extraterrestrials or extra dimensionals. I like that term. Um, I had, you know, I have felt a good, strong connection with angels and I've had some angelic experiences uh, in my life. Um, but at, up until that point, but they they said, you know, we do not exist in a dimension or in any one place. We are within the Shekinah. And that was also a term I didn't really know. And that's a term that's used in Judaism. And the Shekinah is what appears uh, when God is present. And it's the female energy of God, the Shekinah energy. So that's where they said that they are. They're within the presence of that. They're within the presence of the all that is. And as my uh, understanding is uh, expanded of that, I understand that they are truly that connection to that all that is energy. But they're my sort of through line to it. And what I've learned now um, is that we all have our own sort of theos, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not that it's just Theos is mine and can't be anybody else's. If you're probably within my sort of incarnation line, you may have access to them or something like them. But we all have that. We all have that connection. And, and I've just been very fortunate to have accessed mine. So after they had asked me if I wanted to channel, I... Well, they didn't ask me yet. The, the woman had said to me she thought I should channel. And right after they sort of gave me their name and started talking to me about who they were in relationship to me, um, they said to me, do you want to channel? And I said, no, I, I don't. I have no I have no desire to channel. And so I left it. And then for about uh, about two years, I didn't, I didn't channel. And... Um, then at another moment, I felt more comfortable with it. And I was like, okay, let's try, you know. And so um, I got my dates mixed up. I started channeling in 2012, and I started talking to them in 2010 as Theos. So in 2012, um, I channeled for the first time. And uh, it was just a very in the beginning it was very difficult. So for people who are learning to channel, it doesn't always go so smoothly as it goes like now, you know, six, uh, six years later, it's, it's much more smooth. And um, the way that they come through is, is much different than they did in the beginning. For everyone, it's much different. For me, the energy was really heavy and, and it felt like I couldn't make the words. And it, it, so I had to really work on it. And once I got comfortable with that and letting the information come through, it, it was very smooth. And the things that they talked about was very much what they had always taught me. But they started to talk about things that I had never asked them because people started asking the questions. And that's when I really got it that, you know, th this expansion was great for me because they'd always been there for me, teaching me but that other people had questions that I didn't have. And that's when you really started to hear some interesting stuff because it was stuff I'd never thought about. I probably wouldn't ever have thought about, but they would answer questions with such fluidity and such, you know, when I'm talking, I'm like, uh, uh, but they're, they just, they have no break in what they say. There's no hesitation. It's just a clear knowing um, and it's so bathed in love and it's so bathed in just total wanting to, to serve humanity, to, to lift people up and to give them their own power and to, to share that, that it, I, I know that it's, I know that it's very special, the, the chance to, to have, you know, to share in this way. So, um, over the last uh, 
yeah, several years I've been channeling and uh, I went from being a closed eye channel to an open eye channel. And, um, and so now it's funny because as much as I can channel with my eyes open, sometimes I think now maybe I'll just, <laughs> I'll just close my eyes. But so it's now so much more of a choice in doing it. Now it's just what do I prefer as opposed to I have to have my eyes closed because I don't want to break my trance. Now it's more of I can go back and forth. So things change and their message has never really changed. Uh, now, but they, they, I will say their message has always about, been about love and oneness and empowering people, but it's also gotten a little bit more directive as opposed to, well, not directive, yeah, directive meaning they really want people to, to take action. You know, um, they said to me the other day that it's, um, it's great to have um, wonderful discourse and it's great to have wonderful conversations but when people come back and ask the same question week after week, it's, that's not great. So now what they really are wanting to say to people is that it's great to know, but ultimately until you know it yourself, until you subjectively have the experience of your own connection, of your own knowing, then it's always going to be hearsay. It's always going to be going to a channel, going to a psychic, going to a teacher to hear what you ultimately will find in yourself. So now their message very much is you have everything you need to connect. We will tell you how to do it, but we want you to do it because this is your expansion. This is your experience and this is your dharma which is your life goal your the reason you are here first starts with your own connection so that's what they're really uh wanting to share now and they really want to encourage everyone to seek that to seek their own connection because all the questions that you have are so easily answered by your own knowing and it doesn't always the thing is is that and, and i'm hearing what they're saying is that it's not always so instant it's not like oh you switch a button and poof, you have all the answers that's part of life and living and experiencing and sorting through but it does start with the wanting to know it does start with the wanting to connect and, and I don't have any doubt that the reason that everyone is here is because there is something that's always pulling you towards yourself, the light, the light is you, you know? So there is that, um, but they, like I said, they really want uh, people to start taking a little bit more action on their own enlightenment. And that comes through uh, exactly what Lou was saying. And when he said it, I lit up because he was singing my song you know it comes through meditation it comes through prayer it comes through well he says journaling that's also true it, but it comes through the repetition of that of sitting down and this excuse of i can't meditate i don't accept it you haven't found out how you can meditate yet but you can do it everyone can do it and that is the way in it is the way in you want it, if you really, really want it, and you say you want it, you want to channel, you want to do all these things, you got to get in there and you got to meditate. And you can't skip it. You really can't skip it. You think you can get around it. You think you can come to a channel and you can come to me or you can go to gym. You could ask some question and that's going to be the thing that sets you free, but it's not. The only thing that's going to be able to do it is you. Only you. Through meditation, through your own connection. You can do it through chanting, you can do it through deep meditation, but you'll never know until you try. And probably as you do it, it will change because it's not a one-time thing. It's not like you do it and like, oh, you have all the answers and then you're done. You're never done. There's nothing that you're, that you're, you're ever finished. And once you really have that true feeling of knowing, you, you don't wanna be done. You don't wanna be done. So, yeah, that's really my, 
that's really my <laughs> that's my spiel and that's who i am and that's who uh, theos is so salam did you have any specific questions about them he's not here oh, no, that one, yeah huh that was pretty elaborative like he elaborated today so do you have any specific it. questions about about what they talk about or I mean, I just forgot because I came from a religious background and I figured like when I started this journey that all of it was kind of, so I'm, I'm starting to connect the dots and I'd like for him to kind of to clarify some stuff for me. Okay. Well, I will tell you that, you know, it doesn't matter. Dog, they're not dogmatic at all. Um, I happen to... Uh, enjoy the teachings as they come through hinduism because i really connect to it I, I i just i know that somewhere in me that's part of me but there's so many roads and it doesn't matter and it you know i had a beautiful conversation uh with a channel that's going to be on here in a few weeks this woman named jana Hop hopman and if you've seen vashta nareda's latest uh painting it's of her guide uh dilata i think that's the name but you know we were talking about it and if you and I also talked to my um, sort of sannyasi uh, sister uh, who is, is, is in India and she's a woman from New Zealand. She's totally a renunciate and she lives there all the time and follows her guru. But, and she's so into her things. But we, we were both talking about ETs versus religion versus anything. And it's the same answer. And, I, and I, I'd be interested to see what Theo says. But it doesn't matter how you come in. If you listen to what the higher dimensional beings are saying, it doesn't matter if they're Arcturian, it doesn't matter if they're the Hindu gods, I would, I could probably make a good argument that some <laughs> are the same, but you know, it doesn't matter, the Hathors, any of them, the higher beings all send you back to you. They always do it. And there's, they're not That's doing true. it for nothing. They're not doing it to get out. Lately and Bashar and like a lot of uh, and yeah. Jim actually like what got me into this stuff was uh, Jim I was like listen to a lot of the channeling sessions on yeah. YouTube and yeah. like the stuff he channeled especially when he channeled the Prophet Muhammad since I, I grew up Muslim and that was like, okay really, uh, shocked me a little bit so yeah yeah well you know I mean think about it Muhammad had conversations with God through Gabriel yeah yeah, yeah. So what was yeah. he doing? He was channeling, or he was being channeled yeah. too. That's, you know? that's what I figured. Like when, like yeah. because I know a lot of the literature and like a lot of the stories. Now that I think of it, it it's all channeling. He was channeling. The, it is. The Caribbean. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and that's what makes it so channeling. beautiful. You know what happened in humanity, and this is coming now from Theos. It's what happened in humanity, and and even in the Quran, because I read it. The first thing Muhammad says is, don't do what I did. I am only giving you a guide. This is what he says, doesn't he? I'm giving you a guide on how to live. But he don't does, but think... People, people after him took it and twisted it. I mean, I don't, I don't like to judge how they did it. They've done it, in, but, they've done it in every religion because what they do is they externalize it. Yes. You know? They, they externalize their connection. So here's Muhammad, uh, excuse me, here is, uh, yeah, Muhammad having Muhammad his experience yeah. with the divine, you know, yeah. and he, he writes it all down in the Quran. He writes yeah. everything. And the first thing he says, if you read the Quran, and I read it when I was like 21, 22, <laughs> he said, this is my experience. I'm sharing with you my truth but you need to experience it too. I mean, he says it. Hey, I mean, you know? it, it, well, yeah, I understand. It's so clear. It's not so clear. Like if you're in the Muslim community, it's not, it's not like that at all. But now with my new understandings, I yeah. can see what he meant. And you can know, you I read can it see. now with even a broader feeling of it? Did you do? Yes. Yeah. I, I like to take out the dogma out of it because the way I grew up, I yeah. kind of fearing God instead of loving God. Now that I look yeah. at it. Yeah, but and that's what happens. Yeah, it, it it it's a it's a. I there was one time um, I asked uh, Theos to explain to me uh, about how did 
Ooh. How did fear come into the world? And um, they, they, they took me on sort of a mental journey. Like I just sort of went, you know, sometimes they show me things in pictures and sometimes I just get it. But they took me on this sort of mental journey and they showed me that when man first came in, you know, when we were first walking around, there was a very innocence that man had. They didn't have quite a lot of understanding and they were sort of, you know, making their way through the world. But as they started to understand death, that death was a finality, they, they projected that death because they would miss their family. They would miss their loved ones. They would see that the plants would die, that animals would die. When they saw that, instead of realizing that it was a cycle, and it had to do with the primitiveness of their ability to think, they saw it as a finality, like where did those people go? What happened to that animal? Where, where you know, that plant, it's only, there's only a few, there's only a little, there's not enough. And the fear came in of not enough. The fear came in of if I don't eat this food before it rots or you take too much, I'm not going to have any, you know, or they saw someone die and then they're thinking what happens to them and they saw lightning come from the sky and they're thinking, well, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's God angry. So they, they, there was a lot of that stuff that came on and it's the same thing with the religion is that they get these so big truths, but they're learning them from their head. They're not realizing that so much of what is being taught is allegory, is uh, symbolic. You know, they're really not it's it's symbolic, and it, it also comes to the language of the use in the land, like right. Because they're, because right. The, I guess the people, the Arabs at that time, and Arabs today, the language it's like Shakespeare English and today's English. When you understand yeah. it from their perspective, they, it could have been a little bit lighter, a little bit more uh, soft. But today, the way we understand it, it's so rigid. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when they externalize everything and then, you know, also within every religion, unfortunately, there's this element of needing to control. And yes. so, you know, the higher people that had that big understanding, they lauded it over the people who didn't, you know. Um, in a and, dogmatic way. Yeah, in a dogmatic way. And then they start to forget. What does it mean? You know, just the same thing as like a woman covering her head. You know, I love covering my head. I love it. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. I love it because when I'm walking along in, I don't do it in the West, but when I'm in India or when I'm in the Middle East, I love it. And I know, and the reason I love it there is because it's symbolic of respect. It's symbolic of uh, you know, when you want to pray and you just pull your thing down and you're done, no one's seeing you. You're private. You're intimate with, with God. You know, I, I love that. And, and uh, I'll go on the record saying <laughs> that I love it. But also in the Quran, they're saying a woman should cover, uh, you know, and it, 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 it's not, but it's about her, her protection. I mean, you know? I mean, I'll explain it to you from from yeah. some point of view. It's the... Uh... It's like you have to, since you're a Muslim, then Muhammad said that you have to, you just have to. And if you don't, then the dogma comes in. If you don't, you're this and that, yeah. and you're not yeah. faithful. So a lot of people I know, they do it out of fear and they do it out of right, power, exactly. really understanding what it really stands for. But as you said, when you get a higher understanding, you, you kind of know where this stuff comes from. And it becomes an option more than a, it, it's something, a decree that you have to follow. Right, right. So anything that... Anytime anyone says to you, you have to, you have to, you should instantly almost refuse to do it until you really have an understanding of why. And, and your reason is probably going to be much different than the person who's saying you have to. Anybody who's saying you have to, you have to, you have to, they're saying that out of fear. You know, they're saying that out of this, you know, fear of whatever, you know. That, totally. Yeah. Yes. So, but that's, so... If you look at any of the wonderful uh, texts out there and you read them from this sort of higher perspective, it's it's incredible. And the Bible is is a beautiful poem. The 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 Quran is this beautiful dissertation on connection of just this relishing within the love of God and peace. And, so, yeah, yay. Okay. All right. Um, 
I am going to let this little scooter go by. It sounds like it's going through my living room, but it's really not, I promise. And I'm going to I'm going to channel. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to ask. I see Kasalish wants to ask a question. We can start with you. Let's we'll just start. I think they're going to talk a little bit. I've just been talking, but um, I think they're just going to talk for just a moment first. So, All right. Before I start, did anyone else have any questions? No? <laughs> I feel a little nervous. I don't know why. We are Theos, and we are very pleased to be here with you today and to share in this way. Uh, we took a little longer to come because Karen was having to sort of calm her mind. She's very excited and maybe had a little bit too much caffeine today, but uh, she was also asking us some questions specifically about what we really wanted to talk about. And because we generally don't give a, a inkling into what we're going to say, but uh, today we really wanted to talk to specifically light workers, and we mean specifically all of you that are watching. If you were called to see this, then we know through divine intervention and divine timing that you are the very person that needs to be watching this and that we are happy to share with you what we have to say. A light worker is born that way. You are answering a call when you wake up to become a helper of humanity, to become a helper not only of other beings, but also yourself as a being. And we want to tell you that it really starts there. And for many of you who are just waking up, your question really is, what do I do now? And how do I start? And then for others of you that are further down on your path, you are wondering, where do I take my information and who do I take it to? So first we want to assure you that to be a light worker is to answer a higher calling of your inner self. And in this time of awakening, and we really are in a, a strong time of awakening. It's never been like it is now on the planet. Every day, people are waking up. The new babies coming in, many of them are coming in awake. So within a few years, there is going to be a huge number of people that are requiring guidance. And those of you that have a little bit of a head start, whether it's just a few weeks or a few years, this is your time to get ready, if you're not already ready, to provide the guidance. 
Now, we want to say to you that it doesn't always have to come in the way of teaching like we're teaching right now. It doesn't always have to come in the way of giving a class. Because if everyone is awake, if most people that you meet are awake, everybody is going to need a little bit of help. So what it would say to you is now is the time to figure out who you are, who you are in your mission, and what you're here to do. And you do that through educating yourself as to whatever it is that you feel like you have to offer. So whatever your great interest is, we would say to you, spend this time getting to know it. So if you're a healer, you should be looking at different healing modalities. If you are, are, are the kind of person that has already an instant awakening of their healing and you already know what to do, great, then you need to go out and start doing it. But uh, we, we just want to say to you that now is really the time. Now is the time. It's not coming next week. It's now. It's really, really now. So our call to you is to start moving, start taking action, not sitting around anymore thinking, what should I do, but really start taking some action. There's no wrong action for you to take, but if it's about educating yourself, educate yourself, do it. If it's about finding your mission, that's also taking the time to listen. Most of the time, your mission is going to be something that you can offer that comes directly from you because you, as your unique being, will be the best person to bring that thing into the world. It would be like saying to someone who's a plumber that they need now to go out in it as a light worker, become a dentist. That doesn't make any sense. They have all the knowing of plumbing. They should be doing it from that perspective. When you're talking about in a light worker sense, you're talking about taking people from darkness into light. You're taking them from pain into love. So, in your life, what is taking you, where have you been in your pain and now where you are in your love? That is what you have to offer to people. If you've had some sort of trauma or some sort of thing that you've overcome in your life, that specifically should be what you're offering. You know, so that's the thing that you would look at if you were a child who had a, a bad family, well, we won't say bad, but if you had a family that was dysfunctional in, in some ways where you suffered a lot of pain and trauma growing up, those are the people that you will need to help. And that can be in the way of counseling them. It can also be in your family, making sure that that thing doesn't happen again and that you are guiding your child in such a way that they're not experiencing those things. But what you are, what you know, and the experiences of you've had are the very things as a light worker that you will call upon. You're having every experience that you have. You're having your background as a reason. That's what you're here to bring forward. So when people say, you know, embrace your past, embrace your yourself, that's why because only you can offer the unique perspective. And as someone who is awake, you have the ability to not only transform it, but use it as a tool then. So we're here to talk to you today about this specifically, about anything you want to know what regards to your own awakening, your own mission. We, we, we like the term mission because it, it means that you're here really to do something. And every one of you is here to do something. So... That's what we want to talk about today. And we, we love you and we're very pleased to be here. So we'll go ahead and answer any questions that you may have. Salish, have you a question? Yes. Hello. Namaste, Theos and Namaste. Karen. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited at the moment. I'm um, mm. finding it difficult to formulate any sentences. Well, take a moment then, take a deep breath and let whatever you need to do. Okay, yeah. what it is mm -hmm. that what Karen mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. um, my awakening or my path to spirituality came about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I've been uh, bouncing around from reading different channelers, having readings done, psychic reading done, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. 
all over the place till my last one, which was some a month ago. Mm. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, I decided to do something in my life and took advice and rushed off to India. Mm -hmm. Have just come back. I am. I know that I have the messages within me. It is the key that I'm looking for. To let the messages out? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and to know what my mission in life is as well, which you have just talked about. Mm -hmm. So what, how do I start going about re releasing and finding the answers within me? Well, we, we're very pleased that you asked that question. And it's basically what uh, Karen was saying earlier, that the way in is to go in. So the key is not on the outside, really. Well, the, there's a door here, but it's very easy to get in. But everything you want, the, the knowledge you want, the key to that door is within you. So your job at this moment and don't and we and we also want to preface it to say that you are not not on your mission. That's a double negative. You are on your mission even when you're in the preparation stages, even when you're in the exploratory stages, and even when you're in the learning stages. So part your mission now, the first part of it is to go in, to get inside, to start a practice. So it's called a practice for a reason. It's because it's something that you do every day. And it's almost like there's a scorecard really, or well, we don't want to say it like that. If, if you have, if you're an athlete and your goal is the Olympics, you have to do your training every day, whether it's fun, whether it's exciting, whether some days you're only working on technicalities and form or other days where you're having the most exhilarating experience, the practice is part of this devotion. The practice is what will take you in. And sometimes you go in and it's only to find peace and balance. And sometimes you go in and you're blown away by the information, but you don't even get the chance to be blown away by the information until you take those little steps, until you do it. So tell us what you do for your own practice. I started meditation as soon as I came back from Rishikesh, which was Perfect. a week, 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. My difficulties are where, which form of meditation? Well, it really doesn't matter, but we would say to you that staying with something for about 40 days gives you a, an indication of if this is working or if it's not working. It's always working on a vibrational level and it's always working on some level, but the consistency is the key. Like brushing your teeth every day, every day, every day, every day. And if not every day, every other day, but as, as much as possible. But, you know, if you, if you don't do it, then you, you'll never find out. And you can talk to all the channelers they all meditate. They really do. The ones that really, really are locked into their knowing. You know, it, we don't know if you want to channel or if you just want access to your own knowing. You really don't have to channel to have that. You can just go in and get it. Or you can become like what's a conscious channel with a conscious information. But it doesn't even matter about channeling, just about knowing your truth. You have to go in and you, you don't get it unless you do. So 10 days is great, 11 days, 12 days, a lifetime is great. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that once you get in there, you have all the answers and you're done because the connection is what you're, you're striving for. That's what becomes the utmost, that desire to, to, to bask in the richness of, um, yourself your your higher self your connected self your yourself that is love yourself that is infinite when you can touch that with a regular basis you don't have to do a lot of stuff on the outside it, it just comes pouring out of you so is, we would encourage you to continue how are you meditating maybe tell us that at the moment i'm meditating 
blocks in 15 minute blocks um okay i've just come to 30 minutes now um earlier in the early hours of the morning with headphones on no music mm -hmm. in complete silence okay so you're doing you're completely silently meditating completely silently yes okay um what i've noticed is that i have stopped consuming animal meat since i've been back from uh, my body doesn't want to agree with it that's the first improvement i've noticed well there you go and um my mission really is to connect with my higher self and i'm open to whatever whichever way i go i have no yeah. nothing to determine whether i want to be a channel write a book or be a healer right um, well, that's that's not so that's not the most important thing and and we've said this to other people before that the goal is not what you will do the goal is what you will know the goal is what you will experience when you connect to yourself that should be the goal everything else is extra but you know the thing with with cleaning up your eating that is a that is a very big shift and that does make a difference if you agree that we're all vibration then you know we we're not going to get into the idea of this is bad or this is good because in fact it's all stuff but you can choose what vibrational level you want to be on and whatever you take into yourself becomes part of you it it does you you eat it you breathe it you 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 take it in it breaks down the nutrients break down and they become part of you but they're also vibration and they're carrying their own stuff and as someone who's trying to move into a higher vibration because up here is where all the stuff you want to know is up here is where all the and it's not literally up here but you know what i mean you know sometimes we we don't want to semantically debate people but but we we understand sometimes we say things and then it could be taken the wrong way so but in the higher vibrations is where you're trying to go you know and if that's where you're wanting to live up there then the stuff that is very earthy and and of a different energy you don't want it in you simple you know and there's a lot of people say well i meditate and i transmute it okay great that's great but really and truly you know the highest level beings the beings that are the the ones that that a lot of people in human colony want to talk to the arcturians these people don't even eat they're light they don't they don't consume anything and they definitely are not going to want to be uh consuming their friends you know that are walking on the planet but that's a very important part and and as you start to meditate and as you start to allow the the energy to change within you and and we would we would encourage you to maybe do a little bit of oming just to just to center your mind just to keep you as still as possible sort of ohm until you feel calm and you feel centered and then maybe go into your silent meditation but as you do that as that connection starts to really deepen and that groove starts to be to be put into you so that every time you go into your meditation you're going deeper and deeper doors are going to start opening and you're going to start to see a lot of things change within your external life like the thing with the meat like maybe you find yourself a little more patient than you were before or maybe some of your gunky stuff starts to come up some of the things you really need to look up and clean out because meditation and becoming someone that is connected on a higher level is it you have to shake a lot of things loose you know karen has just spent the last several weeks cleaning out a huge amount of stuff out of her house because she knows that her mind is full she knows that she can't stick one more thing into her brain area until she cleans out her mind and part of cleaning it out she figured out a long time ago if you clean your house you also clean your mind you know because your your house is really a reflection of you
So she's been cleaning out, cleaning out, cleaning out, and she's feeling better. She's not done, but she's feeling better. But a lot of the things that happen as you start to meditate and you start to go in, you start to ask the questions of what do I need to do? What do I need to, to you know, become? The universe answers you. And it's always not just in these great epiphanies of higher knowing. It starts to shake up your life because everything within you needs to be in alignment, right? So your words and your deeds and your world will reflect what's really in you. And if you're saying, and if you're here, and you're saying you want to go here, all the stuff that is weighing you down here, that's keeping you here, has to be let go. And that can be in many forms. It can be in the form of physical stuff. It can be in the form of emotional relationships. It can be in the form of what is your job. It can take many, many different things. So all of the stuff that gets shaken up in your life, if you start to suddenly feel discontent from for where you are, there's a reason because maybe it's not in alignment with what you say that you want. So the meditation is what does that. That's the kind of, that's the sort of spiritual cleaning that goes on in the in the in the body and in the mind and in the spirit and it and it does transcend all of the forms it's not just one you don't just all of a sudden go into some high spiritual state and then you walk out and you're still you know angry at everybody and lying and doing all these things they can't exist together so something is going to win Something is going to win. And if you're saying, I want to go up, then all these things that come to you now, all these opportunities to look at your life and to look at your stuff are going to come. And sometimes, you know, it takes a long time. It's not just in one moment, you just, I mean, we, that's why we have many years on this on this planet so that we have the chance to clean it out and some stuff will come from you didn't know it was there i mean deep 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 in the ground and it'll come surging up stuff from childhood stuff from it can be anything it can be really anything but part of the meditation that's the process that starts bringing it up you start anchoring a vibration you know, with the meditation, you anchor it. You're saying, okay, I am up on this level. I'm. How do you feel after you meditate? Do you feel calm? Absolutely at peace and calm, yes. Perfect. You know why? Do you know why? No. Because no. that is your true divine nature. Uh-huh. So you, you, you access your true divine nature within this meditation and you start to walk in the world. And what's happening is that everything that's not in alignment with that comes up for you. Now, a lot of people say, and, and we, we find it to be a little bit funny because it's just a, it's a little bit of a twist and a lack of understanding. People say, you know, I've woken up and now all of a sudden everybody's against me. And what, what's really happening is the universe is bringing to you all those things to show you where you're out of alignment within relationships within within your life. So it's really not that the world turns against you. It may represent like that, but it's really not like that. But all the things that start to shake loose, you know, are are the opportunities. And and where do you fix those things? Where do you go back to get back into your true divine nature? The next day in meditation. And the next day in meditation. And the more you stay the, the thing we will tell you is if someone comes to you and they're all uh, uh, angry, it's not because you're in your true divine nature walking through the uh, the universe with flowers and butterflies flying around you. It's because you started to slip out. And you're show, being shown that in the reflection. You know, it's like the rishis that could walk through the forest and all of the very savage animals will come and lay at their feet, you know. That's what happens when we're really in our, you know, we start to glow, we start to have this presence, and then we start to just attract, attract, attract everything that's of our own like energy. Our flow starts to come. Our, our love starts to come. You know, our ability to heal starts to come when we're in those, that, those alignments. And the, when we're not in alignment, anything around us that's going wrong, you can say, whoa, okay, this is, I'm, I'm out of alignment. Either I'm going to sit down and meditate right now or I'm really going to observe what's happening, you know. 
So that's why the practice is so important. Okay. Keep going back to it and going back to it and going back to knowing that even when you're not seeing the result in the moment of the meditation and you're just holding on for that, waiting for that ding to go so your 15 minutes are up, it still counts. It still counts. It's like the athlete who does the workout and it was the crappiest workout of their life, it still counts. And that's why we do it. Okay, it's making a lot of sense to me. The thing that is slightly mm -hmm. obscure at the moment is a recommendation of, you know, you should only do 15 minutes or 30 minutes, X, Y, Z. Well, that's only because you can do as much as you can. Um, but for a lot of people, 15 minutes is a lifetime. Oh, okay. You know? Sometimes I do get lost and I'm there for 45 minutes. That's what I mean. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. The thing is, is that if you, you know, for, for some people, if, if they, they don't ground and then they kind of get up into this place and then they're having a hard time maneuvering their day. But uh, Karen's guru told her that she should be meditating three hours a day, not just meditating, but doing her practice at least three hours a day. So if you are feeling inclined to go an hour, two hours, and you have the time and the luxury to do that, do it. it you're only, why would you ever want to move out of presence if you don't have to? I mean, that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your I, self. I think my higher self has decided after the Rishikesh trip that I'm in between jobs at the moment. In other words, I'm unemployed. Yes. I've got all the time in the world, so no excuses. I don't want to hog too much of the time. There's lots of people who want to come on. Just one last mm. thing. Are there any other tools that I could use apart from meditation? Well, yes, but just remember that you are body, mind, and spirit. So the meditation is helping with the spirit, and it's also about focusing the mind. So don't leave your body out, you know. Are you uh, doing yoga? No. Well, maybe you could look at it or some kind of physical activity that helps to tone the body. A healthy body is very important. Okay, I shall. It I really shall. is, and, and people kind of tend to think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm spiritual and I, I have this, but it's really body, mind, spirit. Your body is your vehicle. You need a healthy body. And being spiritual does not negate your uh, responsibility to your vehicle. Your, your, your vehicle is as spiritual as your spirituality, but it will break down if you don't take care of it because it is a product of the movement that it has and the food that it's given and the environment where you are. So always try to think of yourself as a complete being. Well, why not be the best you that you can be the strongest you the most vibrant you the most energetic you the most loving you you know th th that's that's the the most beautiful thing about being a being that is fully awakened you you don't ignore any of yourself you know yourself in the fullness of yourself so okay. also add your body into the mix Thank you very much, Theos and Karen. I think other people want to come in. Come in. Namaste. Namaste. Is there any other questions, Don? Uh, yes, I guess it's my turn. Okay. Uh, yes. How are you doing? We're doing very, we're always doing fine, but we're very pleased to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, I'll go with the more general questions first. Uh, I'll, if, if if you can give me a reading about like the Middle East and especially the country of Libya right now, because things don't look so great. And I maybe that's just me, but I understand maybe my mission is in this this location, helping the people here during maybe the next few years where things are going to get so dark. So that's my first question. Well, we'll just say to you, we don't really focus so much on government and politics. Um, but we would say to you that you need to follow your your instinct about it. If you feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing, then then we would agree with you to say that that is the case. 
humanity goes through dark and light stages and what's happening in this time especially now is that we are in an upheaval we have really reached the point of complete dualism where things aren't that gray anymore where things aren't passable anymore they're really either light or they're dark and things have become that strong and what's happening is people are having to deal with blatant this or blatant that and there's there's a clash over it you know there's clashes about things there's the most greed that there's ever been there's the most hate that there's ever been but there's also the things like you that can be the most love that there's ever been and all of these interactions that are happening within the world and all of these sort of inevitable we don't think that they are but all of these sort of seemingly or things that are on a trajectory where it looks like they're going to clash mm -hmm. are in a lot of ways necessary to give the opportunity for something different because no, when both sides idea. are doing like this so long there has to be an explosion an explosion um we I, I, I can that it see that like, i can read the events and i can see that things are going towards that way okay so they're going that way then that's that's and, that's one thing but your your and choice and the moment, like, and what do like, people do oh, sorry, okay. sorry i feel like people don't see that people are just so dark and they, they don't see the dark side like whatever you talk to people they're hopeless they uh they're, they're well, ready to join the also, thing about you know, it is and we, we want to interrupt you for a friends. moment we want to interrupt you for a moment that you can choose to focus on whatever it is you want to focus on and we want to emphasize to you that we will ask you this question do you believe you create your own reality i believe that yes yes okay well if you believe that if you really really believe it and we'd like you to jump to a place where even if you don't know let's pretend that you know you create your own reality if you know you create your own reality then you know that whatever you focus upon is what you experience so it's like that i think like i have to leave all the people i know and like all the people well I that's know that's not that. necessarily true but why do you feel that you have to leave all the people you know or not 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 all the people but the majority of the people i grew up with and all that stuff they don't seem to be joining the light side they're just sticking where they they are they, where they see they are they don't want to move and okay. if i want to stay beside them i either have to show them the light and pull them out of it or like i'm gonna have to leave for my own sake. Well, no you can never pull anybody out of anything we want to tell you that i mean maybe physically you could help somebody you know physically pull them but awakening comes from within the person and the 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 best thing you can do for them is to work on yourself that's really all you can do it's that's, always that's their choice question. sorry so that's where my second question comes in yeah Let's it's always continue. their choice it's always their choice and it's always their experience you know and there's always several things at play at any given time and and this is where as humans you get into the conundrum of how much do i help how much do i insert my will on another human being um, we would say to you that if you're if you feel that you are there to help then you will help joyously regardless of worrying about whether the other people are coming along because sometimes it can take a lifetime or many lifetimes for people to move towards light you know sometimes the being itself has specifically chosen that incarnation to specifically experience that thing that it seems like is terrible but really for them is just another experience and also for you so sometimes you have to walk the balance between knowing what really has to be done and really doesn't have to be done and what we will say to you is the only thing that you can truly truly affect 
is yourself. That's the choices that you can make. And we wouldn't be afraid that you have to leave anybody behind, but you can be your best self. You can be your knowing self in the midst of anything. That's true mastery, where no matter what's going on around you, you can stand in your knowing. Mm -hmm. And, and the okay. seeds that you plant in the other people, they will flourish when they flourish. But you have to also be so unattached to that outcome that you're doing it just out of the love that you have. But you don't need them to be any different than they are. Mm -hmm. They'll get there. They will get there when they get there. And they may get there years from now. And you might be surprised, like, wow, you really did grow up. But I didn't think that you would. You're also very, very young. And from your perspective, Things are very, how do you want to say? Things seem like you will, you, 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 if you change, it's the end of something. We, we would say to you that's not the case. That, that moving forward, eventually people do sometimes come in and out of your life, but you shouldn't be afraid of that at all. But you don't have to leave anybody behind. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. You don't have you don't even have to to embrace your own knowing if you don't want to. That can also be your choice. It's 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 not a bad choice at all. But being focused on all the things that can go wrong is also maybe not the optimal way to find peace and love because you're only focused on on the negative it could be very much so are you in libya i am right now yeah. yes it could be very much so things go very very wrong there you know they oh, go so. very very negatively Every you day. Will... But, uh, i like your message like i i'm that's what i'm trying to do with myself yeah. i'm trying to i'm, I'm meditating every day yeah. and for the past six months I, I maybe the way I chose it for myself is I I want to flush a lot of the negative stuff in me mm -hmm. and all at once so I can really start flying in the light maybe and so far it's been a very uh, say bumpy road but I like it because it brought me a lot of evidence and a lot of stuff that was buried very deep inside yeah. like stuff from my early childhood stuff yeah I didn't know that was there you don't even know it's there yeah and you know, it's coming and it's like i i don't trust any therapist i don't trust anybody anymore except myself to heal that and that's the conclusion i come to it's like mm -hmm. i have to heal myself you know by myself and that's maybe where i need guidance and help from you like how can i transform all those childhood stuff that i buried down how can i let go of that stuff like what should i do in my meditations maybe a little more specific guidance to Okay. Let go of the stuff and move forward. Okay, well, we want to give you a word, of, a really big word of encouragement because you are so young. It's very beautiful that you're doing this sort of self introspection and self exploration now because you have so many years ahead of yourself to walk your path. And it's very nice to have someone so young awake. You know, if you're much older, you've got that much time behind you. And You've, you've got stuff going back to your childhood, but your childhood wasn't that long ago. So it's still very fresh for you. And, and, and once you are clearing it out, and as you do clear it, you know, you'll be ready to move forward so much, much quicker. Um, when it comes to stuff that's trauma, and, and we don't know what your traumas are, but we would say to you that the way to, to deal with them is to is to remember that everything is experience. It's what we were saying a little bit earlier. Everything is your experience. And on some level, you have allowed the experience to come into your life. And you are not your experience. And the experience happened for you to experience it, but it did not actually happen to you. And that's what we want to uh, emphasize. You are a soul that is eternal. And when we leave this body, we leave this. 
We let it go. It's gone. So we would like to, in your meditation, to maybe do what we tell Karen is to try to take a step a little bit out of your body so that you have the ability to look at something, looking down on it in an observational way and say, okay, when I was seven, we're just, we're not giving anything away, but when I was seven, I participated in this time, this moment of time, and this, this, and this happened. What did I learn about myself in that moment? What did I learn about the way I was treated in that moment? What did I learn about what I never want someone else to experience? What did I learn about what that other person didn't have within their capacity that made them act in that way? And what didn't I know then as a child that would have maybe prevented that. Do you know what I mean? So like an analysis mode. Excuse us, what? Like an analysis mode. Like An analysis analyze. moment. Because someone who does something to another person in whatever shape or form that it is, they don't have something. They don't have knowledge of themselves. They don't have compassion. They don't have awareness. They're fighting their own mental illness. Maybe they're just mean, you know, but they're, they're lacking something. They're lacking a very important component of love in their life because if they truly were walking in their love, they would never do something to another person. I completely and understand. You as yeah. a child who is experiencing that, it's a power play. Someone who does something to a child, the child at that moment doesn't usually have the awareness that this person who's doing something to them is doing something wrong. They know it feels uncomfortable. They know, but they don't have the, we don't mean that they're doing something wrong, that they don't have the power to know that they're doing something wrong. We mean they don't have the power to usually resist or to put up protest enough to stop it. Mm -hmm. So now you as an adult can look back and you can say to your inner child, I now understand the dynamics of what happened and I will assure you, and you're saying this to yourself, I will never let that happen to you again. And I'm promising that I, as I move forward, not only will I never do that to another person, but any other person that I can help in that situation, I will help them. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you, that's how you heal it. And then to the, the being that did that to you, the person that did it, you can only just send them love and realize that that person is missing that. They're missing that. And maybe uh -huh. they go through this whole lifetime without it, um, but you can still send it to them so at some point later, they are also healed. Because okay. someone who perpetrates another person is also not healed. They are sick. In some I way. came to understand that, yes, lately when I was meditating, yes. Like even your parents, even people in school and all that stuff, yeah. they, they're not fully, they're not whole when they do those no. actions. And that's why they do them in the first place. No. We always say, we, we talk about, when we were talking about light and dark, that everything is really in two divisions. There's also always two things going on in any given time within the universe, within our being. When we came into this world, we came... Ultimately, we came into a dualistic world. This world has to be dualistic for it to exist, for us to have an understanding, because the dualism gives us perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. And it can be in very big terms or it can be in very minute terms. But in the, something like trauma and something like, you know, a predator victim kind of situation, it's very black and white. Um, mm -hmm. But at any given time, there's always two things happening. There's also, there's always the love or the not love. And we don't want to say that it's evil because evil means there's awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, okay. So the person, even if they knew what they were doing, even if they chose to do it, even if they did it because we said they were mean, there is the non-awareness of love. And that's, that's where compassion comes in and understanding. And yeah, the compassion, and not the compassion saying it's okay to do it, but the compassion, in, and not even in the, yeah, the compassion to understand that that person 
is lacking something. They're lacking the awareness of who they really are. They're lacking the awareness that they are a being that is love. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And everything in this world is a little bit of one or the other. You know, mm -hmm. you shout at your dog. Maybe you're shouting to stop them from running across the street. That's one thing. Or you just shout at them because you're irritated. That's mm -hmm. you not remembering your true divine nature. That's you not being in control of your own being, of being in, in, in fully, you know, in yourself. So we were saying to Salish, when you are in your meditative state and you first come out and you're so high, you know, in your vibration, mm -hmm. and then you walk outside and somebody just you know, grabs you, then you, you know, you, you fall down. And that's what happens so much. But when you talk about people that are really, you know, making very aggressive, negative actions towards another person, it's because they're not, they're not in their true divine nature. They're so far out of it. They're so, you're never out of it, but their awareness is so far out. Their knowing is so far out. They've, they're so into the Maya of this world. They're so far into this illusion of this stuff is real. And if I don't take it, you're going to take it from me and I'm going to get it before you do. And you, have, you know, you don't deserve to be on this planet and you don't look like me. And so you're, you're something that I don't want or, you know, whatever they're fighting against, whatever that demon is that they're, that is driving them to do what they're doing, that internal not knowing is, is, is them not being in love. That's what, you know, people talk about demons. Demons are only there to keep us from remembering who we are. That's their game. That's their fun. That's why they're here. You know, that's, that's the eternal struggle, light and dark. Knowing who you are, when you know who you are as a being, when you know that you are eternal and that you are love, you are so powerful. So the and when you say, is to when you say demons, hmm? when you say demons, because I heard a lot of teachings that say demons don't exist, demons are just lack of love, and then I hear other people saying that no, they do exist, and they have well, like everything they, they have, they feed on negative energy. Well, everything exists. Let's just say it like that. Everything exists and everything is experience. And every kind of energy does exist, you know. And some things can be, uh, you, you, I, we, we use demons, but we don't want you to get caught up on them. But yes, they do exist, just like angels exist, just like jinns exist, you know. All of it exists in the hierarchical way on the in the energetic form, everything can be anything that you can think of. It exists. It exists. It all exists, but you don't have to play with that. You don't have to play with them. You know, they're what we're saying to you is their job is to keep you out of your own knowing your mm -hmm. job, their job. That's what they're here for. That's why they exist. You know, we came into an illusionary world. And when we start to transcend that illusion, we start to move into our true love nature, and we start to realize that this is all a game, that we create it, that we are here just to play with it, we're moving out of the illusion. And to keep us in this, you know, you need to forget. That's true. Yeah. So that's what they're that's what they're here for. That's what they're here to do. And and you know, anger can be a very motivating force. But if you dive into anger, it can really become a very negative, negative, he heavy energy. So it just depends on how far into the, into the depths you want to go. But we don't think you want to go there. So, but we, we wanted to give you the illusion or, or the illustration of how it really is working. That everything mm -hmm. is a play on love or not love. Is it love or not love? Mm -hmm. That's it. When when Karen was little, we we gave her and some instruction because she really wanted to know God. That was her thing. That has always been her thing. She still wants to know God. That's just her thing. That's how she came in. She was wired for that. And she said to us, "Okay, what do I have to do? What is it I'm here to do? Why?" And she was saying this to us very young. What do I have to know? What is one thing I have to know? And what we said to her is, "Go get the Bible." 
in her Bible when she was little was this big, big book in her mind. She was a very little child, so it's really not that big. Mm -hmm. But she went and got the Bible, and we said, open the Bible and just read the first thing you see. And through our help, she came to a, a very specific passage. And the passage said, if a man says he loves God, but he hates his neighbor, he is a liar. For how can he love God that he has not seen, but hate his neighbor who he has seen? And then we said to her, that is all you need to know. And we're saying that to you. That is all you need to know. You need to love. You need to be in love. You need to make sure that your life is a reflection of what you truly know. Love. Anything else is a lie. Anything else is an illusion. Anything else is, is a diversion from that. So anything that is in your life that is not lining up with who you truly are, which is love, is outside of the line of where you want to be. So all you need to know is that if you are love, if you are being love, if you are walking love, if you are seeing love, if you're speaking love, if you're living it, everything else in your life will have to come in line with that. And that's what you can give to your friends. You can love them despite their not knowing. You can love them because they don't know. You can love them because they're playing so deeply in that illusion. And you can be that person that always just holds them knowing that, you know what, it doesn't matter if they don't remember who they are because you know who they are. You know that they are I awesome feel like I want to be a prophet around them sometimes. I don't know if I guess like prophets, what they did is they, they go into very dark places and they hold the torch and just show the people the way. Yeah. Well, you, and maybe they, I love they hold much. the torch by being the torch, not by holding anything. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. And that's why I have to heal myself first and cleanse myself before yeah. I can walk. The, well, just the, the fact path. that you are working on it, you get huge applause and love from the higher realms. They're very excited that, that that's what you've chosen. But we will tell you that you become the torch by being it, not by holding it. Holding it is outside. Everything that you need is within you, and it will come out of you. And they'll see it. They'll see it. And even if they don't know it, they will know it. And the thing for you to know about them is they are just like you. They are also divine. They've just covered it up so much. You know, when we come into this world, we leap in. We leap in from the higher realms. That's how we come in as a soul. And as we come in, what happens is these coverings come over us so that we stop perceiving the way things really are. And then we sort of land here. And we, yeah, come, we, we land here. We forget. We come into the forgetfulness. Now, what's happening in this cycle of coming up? Many of us are, are letting some of that go. But that's also sometimes it's concealed grace and sometimes it's revealed grace. You're in, a, you're in a position of revealing your own grace by moving away all of these coverings. And some people are still, you know, not only do they have the coverings, they're adding a few more, but they're still that divine soul. And if you can know that about them as much as you know it about yourself, then you're really onto something. Then you really know. Then you know. If you know that the person next to you is just as divine as you are, you can't help but love them. Pardon me for interrupting. Okay. interrupting. Message. Thank you. Yes? Uh, we have a few more people that need to be uh, addressed. Sure. Okay. Are we done, Salem? Yes, I got the message loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Salem. Thank you. Okay, next we have Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. I am. Um, thank you. I just wanted to ask the question. Um, I know what my um, divine uh, mission is here. Sorry, we're, we're having a problem hearing you. So we, we just need to turn this up for a second. Okay. We're having an yep. issue here. Um, okay. I, uh, can you hear me now? Say it one okay. more time. I, 
Yeah, I just wanted to know um, a time frame. I, I know what my mission is here. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a time frame as to how long it will take for me to channel guidance from God and the angels and Jesus, which is my mission? Well, we would ask you, what are you doing now as far as channeling? Are you are you listening? And how are you channeling? And no, we can't give I, an answer. I'm okay. I'm, I'm taking okay. courses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm meditating. I'm doing whatever it takes to make this happen. Um, but it hasn't yet. So are but you I'm told only that's my, my life mission. Are you, who, t were you told that was your life mission? Do you know it's your life mission yes. to do that? Yeah. Within yes. yourself? Yeah, I feel it too. I, yes, absolutely. And is it your greatest it's all joy? I can think about. Yeah. It's your greatest joy to channel? Yes. Okay. Are you doing yeah. anything with automatic writing? No. Have you, no. have you considered that? Because that's a very good way in. The automatic. Okay. Uh, no, I haven't. Do you know how to do it or what to do? I, I'm. No, <laughs> not yet. Okay. No. What you do? This is what you do on a practical way. We asked you if it was your greatest joy because we we think that your mission should come from something you know is something that you should do, and and if someone else tells you it, that might be their greatest joy for your life, but it may or may not be yours. But if you say it's yours, we believe you. What you do is when you meditate and you sit down and you take a piece of paper. And the one thing that Karen found out when she started channeling is because we had always been answering her questions. So the one thing she couldn't understand when she started channeling was what was she going to talk about? Because she didn't really have any more questions. And the moment she had a question, it was generally answered. So what she found out is that when other people started asking the questions, she got the information. So we would encourage you to work with a friend, to work with someone who you love and trust, but that can also ask some questions. Because if you're just sort of sitting down waiting for something to happen, it doesn't generally happen. In channeling, the questions are the key. The need to explain something is the key. That's what pulls it out of you, the channel. And it doesn't always come for everybody in the same way. Automatic writing is a way to do it. You could also do it sitting on the computer, but we think that the holding the pen and the paper, that visceral experience, is, is, is more important, but the questions are really the key. So if you wanted, you could sit with probably anyone in Human Colony, or, or Karen will do it with you, and you start to ask, someone asks you the question, not you, but someone asks you the question, and you start to write down whatever comes to your mind. Because what you're trying to do when you're channeling, it's like opening a, literally a channel like a tube, maybe. The best way is to think of opening the tube. And it might be right now really, really small, and that information is not really flowing through. But as you start to work it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, so then it just starts flushing through. But the actual channeling through your, through your, your mind, through your body, is not always for everyone the instant thing that happens. First, the information has got to start flowing and you've got to get out of the way of that. You have to be able to just let whatever's coming in, come in. And that happens through, again, through practice. So if you sit down with another person and they ask a question and have them ask, don't have them ask questions that are predictive. Like you just asked us a very predictive question. When is it going to happen? Right? Well, the when is not important. What, what is important is the, is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? What do I need to do? So get past these questions of timing because divine timing is divine timing. And there's a lot of things that have to coalesce in the universe for anything to happen. And, and to try to glom on to that one specific answer, you know, if you say June 23rd, 
2018 at seven o'clock. That's very specific. And if you can answer questions like that, you could really, really make a lot of money. But if you sit down with the person and they start to ask you a question, what is, what is the nature of the soul? Or something, maybe not so complex, but something like that. Or asking a question that is just burning in the heart of the person that is not, is my boyfriend coming back? You know, these kind of 3D questions. You need high questions to answer in a high way. You know, if you want to talk about, you know, uh, uh, what's happening with your job, that's a question. Go to a psychic for that. They're dealing with those lower energies, but you want to deal with high energies. You want to channel divine information. So you need to be asking divine questions and you need someone to ask them. And when that information starts to come, start to write it down. And whatever comes in, whatever, just write it down. And if you say, well, I don't know the answer. Well, it's not you answering. It's your higher knowing that's answering. And you just, you just start to write it down. But, but uh, Karen would be happy to work with you on that because she really is very, she feels very strongly in, in part of her coming through in this. So, but the questions are the key. That is what we will tell you. The questions are the key. The, the sitting in the meditation is, is, is the very good part because you're, you're focused and you're open. But what pulls it out of you is the questions. Does that make sense to you? Thank you. Have you had anybody asking you any questions? Not yet. No, uh, that's, that's really the beginning. Let, let us tell you this, yeah. this true story. Karen had started channeling um, herself, just us. And one of the reasons that it was so difficult for her to let the words come out is because she was struggling with what do I say? What am I going to say? What is this going to feel like? How is this going to work? And she was doing a radio show, and she was on a radio network with a lot of other channelers, channelers like Rob Gothier and Roxanne Swainhart and Daniel Scrant, and they were all in the same network. And she had said to one of the other radio hosts, I'm channeling. And, and she said, great, come on, come be on the show. And she, she thought, oh, my gosh. So she went on the show, and she had never channeled in public. She had barely channeled by herself. And she went into the trance. We came forward. The most she had gotten from us is we are Theos. That's the most that she had ever really gotten. We are Theos and we love you. That's, that's, our, that's our line. That's what we say. But that's as far as she'd ever gotten. And when that radio host started asking the questions, she, because she didn't have any other real choice, she just let go and the information started to really come out. And that's when she said, wow, I'm a channel. But the questions are the key. The questions are the key. So it doesn't happen you. to you. It happens with you. And it happens when there's a necessity for information to come out. And the only reason that information would be come out is because there's a, there's a need to share that. So, and I and I will say that it's a really nice thing, this Karen saying to you um, that it's really good that you're not channeling without questions because you really need to realize the 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 difference between talking like a psychic and being a channel. You want the high information. So it's actually quite good that it hasn't actually worked yet for you. Because the questions probably, well, you say haven't even been there, but they might not even been the right ones. So, but I'd be happy to work with you on that if you like. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Great. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. Make an appointment with Karen. Uh, Next we have Paola. Hi, Paola. Hello. Paola. Paola? Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, hello. I would like hello. to ask uh, as well regarding diverse like uh, a healer but uh, the most 
difficult part or the most challenging part for me is that I feel uh, many of the blockers, many things, the planet. Mm -hmm. So, like a uh, place that has been uh, Don, would you would, that, that can you type your question to Don because we're having a really yeah. hard time understanding you. It's cutting in and out very strongly. Uh, I didn't hear you. What did you say? We said that we we can't hear your question. If you can type it to Don, uh, then we would will answer your question. But we're having a hard time. Is there someone after Paola, and then we can answer that question and come back to her? Uh, yes, after Paula is Lana. Okay, Lana, why don't we have your question? Paola, please type the question to Dawn um, so that we can, because we can't hear you. You're cutting in and out, and, and we're missing about every other word coming through. But, uh, right now, is, is better, yes. the connection, or no? That's, that's better now. So much but... better, yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead and ask your question, then. What I'm asking is that regarding my mission, because what I feel is that... Uh, the planet is inside my field, the blockage around the planet. And so uh, clearing all this blockage, but um, I don't really know if this is a good way to do it because uh, it's, it's, it's taking a lot of time on me and, and, and I heal it. Uh, and this part of, of me, uh, healing as well. The planet is is taking me a lot of time, and I, I'm just don't know if maybe I'm not doing it right. So, if we understand what you said, is that you are a healer, but you have some blockages within your being, and they're preventing you from doing your work. Is that correct? It says that <laughs> the blockage, the blockage that the planet has. For example, density or uh, something that is blocking in the uh, around the neck or around uh, some levels, and so uh, I clear it up. But uh, I'm spending a lot of time clearing this up. Maybe I'm not doing it right, or maybe I shouldn't be doing it. So what I'm experience is that uh, channeling as well, uh, well, an aligned language channel. But uh, all things are inside me, so I'm not hearing anything outside. So for me, it's very difficult to see or to understand if I'm doing things because it's everything inside me. So it's just me all the time. Well, we'll ask you this. How old is the Earth? I don't know. Thousands, thousands. And, uh, so, so you think, and so how, long have you been, how long have you been working with the healing of the Earth? Maybe many lives, but I don't know. I'm not doing it because I want to do it. It's just I feel the blockage or the dense energy that is passing through my channel all the time. But sometimes it's that dense, is that many that I cannot uh, pass all this uh, in my channel, you know? Well, we would just say to you that you are one being in this in this planet, and there's a lot of billions of other beings that also have to clear themselves too. And so we wouldn't say to you, you're not doing it right. We would just say to you that your measurement of time is, is a little bit um, unrealistic, that your job, if you feel the, the desire to clear something, that it's like chipping away at an iceberg your your chipping away does make a difference, but seeing the result of it, it should not be the motivation. You're doing it out of the love of what you feel the need to do, but you're not having to do it because you think that it's going to be done in one second. You know, it's like a drop of the ocean trying to melt an iceberg. You you will have an effect, but your your effect will be amplified as more and more and more other being share that same energy projection with you. So don't put on realistic. But I'm, not, but, but I'm not trying to say that I want to do this. It's just I feel the blockage in my field, and so I try to clear it out from my field because I feel it in me. 
It's not that I want to uh, save the world or clean the world. It's just I feel it on me. I try to clear it up from me. See, that is not me. It's outside. It's something that is blocked in that place, in that location, in that city, in that where a special place that it is. Well, again, you know, the clearing it sometimes takes more time than the actual thinking that it's gone and then it's gone. So obviously, if it's not letting go, there's something within you that you still need to to face and to look at. And that's something that we can't really do here in this webinar because it would take a little bit longer. But we would suggest to you that you do some sort of regression and really look at what it is so that you can bring it forward to yourself, so that you can really confront it and, and have not only the knowing that you're sending the energy to get it out, but maybe to really the message of it is for you to really take a look at it and understand how it directly relates to you. And if sometimes if you don't know what it is, it's hard to get rid of it, you know. So we would suggest to you that you take a really good hard look at it and maybe you need some assistance in doing that. But if it's coming up for you and it's still there, then it's definitely part of you. And because it's so in your awareness, and you, because that's a very good thing that you have the awareness of it, that means that it really needs to be taken a good look at. Yeah, but wh where can I start? Uh, how can, I don't know. I, I don't really know because I don't know anyone that can, can feel uh, the air or the blockage of the air or the blockage of the places. Or, uh, this is something that... I had no hair about it. Well, where are the places that you're feeling these blockages? Uh, uh, anywhere. I can go to uh, whatever. E even like a, a park that is full of nature, there's always dense energy. There's always things around. There's always blockage on the air. There's always blocking. I don't know. It's everywhere where I go. It's no... Uh, it's, it's not a specific place. I can feel the good energies as well in the air, under the air, but I feel as well all the dense, all the blockage, all the things that uh, pass through me, you know? It is like inside of me, but it's not me because I can feel that I clear it up and it's not me. It's, it's uh, something in the, in the environment, something in the, I don't know, in the, in the fields of the air. But... <laughs> I, I was wondering, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know. Well, if you, I, I just the asked thing is, if you're walking, case. right, if you're walking through a place and you're hint with the dense energies, the one thing that you can do that's very instantaneous is just send it love. And you can also take the perspective that if you're going all these different places and you're continually coming up to all these different dense energies, they're presenting themselves to you to one, show you, because it's ultimately connected, it's gonna be connected to you in some way, shape, or form. So your job, as you said, your mission will be just to send it the love, but let go of that. And maybe again, it's like dropping water on an iceberg. You make an impact every time you go. You do have, if you do have the awareness of everywhere you're going, you're finding these energies, then part of your mission will be just to send out the clearing. You know, it could have been someone was standing in that position and they just had an argument and then they left and went away and then there, there's that energy that is just still sort of densely there and you're walking up on it. The other thing is we could, we could say to you is send out the love to it, but focus on the other good stuff and, and don't but, really... But, it, it, but it's, it's, not, it's not that they're outside me. I feel them inside me. So when I open my channel bigger, so I feel that it's cleared up, 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 and I can spend hours, days, and it's cleared up, cleared up, cleared up. It's no, it's no ending. Well, there probably is no ending to it. Because yeah, there's continual exactly. there's continual interaction of people and things and situations and thoughts. And like we said to Silish earlier, when you start to meditate and you start to really work on stuff, the stuff comes up. It doesn't come up only from this lifetime. It comes up from other lifetimes. You know, it, there's probably no uh, coincidence that when you walk in a park, you're running into old energy that's coming to you, but it's probably your old energy from the last time you walked in that park, maybe a hundred years ago or many lifetimes ago or, or something like that. So just keep clearing it, but it, there's really no end to it. 
That's what we're trying to tell you. And then, and it took us a while to get there because we were trying to get a picture but of what maybe, you were saying. Excuse us? No, that's, that's what I'm saying, that maybe I'm not doing it right because it, it, it seems that it's not ending and I can't spend my life uh, just open my channel and clear all this up, you know, because otherwise I won't be able to live uh, and do other things. So you're prevented from doing other things because you've always got negative energy coming in. It's not coming in. It feels like inside of me. And it's just moving, up, coming moving up. around, moving. Yeah. It's coming up. It's and then moving. you clear like it a, and then more comes up. Yeah. It's always like this. It's more, 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 more. And then it's so too much, but uh, it's still cleaner. And it could clear hours, days, night. Uh, they it's no that's why i know that it's not me because it, it's no stopping in i a day in the morning in the afternoon my home in the park everywhere okay well okay what we would there's several things that we can tell you to do and we we would need to explore this with you we can't do it here in this webinar we don't think it's that you're not doing it right because obviously you're clearing it but more is coming in probably what is happening is you're not actually closing off so that more doesn't come in we would say to you though if it's coming up and it's coming to you it's for you it's for you to clear it and sometimes your job is specifically what is being presented to you. Your job is to clear energy. It's coming up to you. Ultimately, everything is you. It's coming up within you. It's part of you. It can be lifetimes mm -hmm. back. You know, there may not seem like there's an end to it but the, because it could go back so, so, so far. But if your job is right now to clean this energy and you have to keep cleaning it and keep cleaning, that's also part of your job. You can do some experiments to see if things change, like after you clear it, just put a protective bubble around yourself to see if that stops it. But if it's truly within you and it's trying to come out and you're having to clear it, then that's what you have to do. But we, yeah, we don't no, know there's that. There's no protection. There's no protection for yeah. this. Uh, well, we I could you protect seven layers, a pyramid, whatever. It doesn't work because it's not, it's not something that um, I can block myself from. Yeah, well, that's only because of your uh, uh, not knowing how to. We would say to you, speak to Don Parkinson because he has very good abilities to do that and to, to instruct on how to do that. We would also say to you that you should really maybe work with an archangel uh, like someone like Michael who is very good at protecting and very good as a gatekeeper for for people so that it, you know some of this stuff can just stay down it may be so much so that you're very good at clearing it that the universe keeps bringing you more and more and more to clear it but if you don't want to do it like you said it's not that you want to do it it's that you've had to do it then maybe you put yeah. a put a sort of cap on what is coming in so that you can get on with other stuff and you don't have to deal with this stuff but sometimes it's like people who open up to their psychic abilities and all of a sudden they're seeing spirits and things everywhere where because they haven't put any kind of cap and they haven't had a gatekeeper so everything that can come in is coming in you know mm -hmm. so we would okay. say to you it's the best thing to probably speak with don and see if he can uh, help you in that in that way but maybe call upon okay. archangel michael to become a gatekeeper and say listen once i clear out this next stuff nothing else unless it's really important <laughs> is not to no that's true you know when Karen first when Karen first awoke awoke to her mediumship, and this happened many years before she ever was a channel, and she could see you know spirits, and she could talk to them, and she could talk to the dead, and deal with everybody's ex aunt that had died. They were coming in. They were coming in. They wanted the communication. They wanted this message to go to this person and this one. And she was at one moment. She said, "Okay, I, I don't I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to experience it anymore." And she set up what was called a gatekeeper. And that's a very normal thing to do. Where you, And she used Archangel Michael, and that's why we're telling you that, to, to become a gatekeeper. And it can be any being that you trust. Maybe it's an Arcturian or whoever you have you know, great uh, uh, communication with, whatever it is, your God, whatever. But you, you say, this is my rule. My rule is that when I'm in the shower, 
or when I'm trying to sleep or when I'm walking down the street, I don't want to be bombarded with these energies. Only if it's for my greatest good in that very moment is it to come through. If it's just energy coming through to be cleared, I'm not working right now. I'm not going to do that. And you can do that as, as, a, as, a, as a being. If you don't want to clear these energies, if you don't want to experience them, you don't have to. We have a different perspective because we think that if they're coming up within you, it's something within you that needs to be cleared. But maybe you just want to do it every Saturday or once a month or once six. That's that's okay until you have a better understanding of what's going on. Then we would say to put a cap on it so that you at least have some peace about it. But you're open. You're obviously open. Your channel is open and it is not protected. It's not grounded and it's not closed off. Ask for a great gatekeeper and work with dawn to put a like a, a bubble around you so that things aren't coming in unless you are unless you're consciously inviting them in that's what we would say and then we feel very strongly that that's the answer for you at this moment how does that feel okay uh, no uh, just don't resonate with this uh because i had seen that uh uh, it's maybe part of my mission is just it's too much and I know that I have a very strong um, transmutation things but uh, still yeah. uh, it's too much um, yeah so, so if it's too much then it's then it's well ha we really now have your answer you're you're what you have to learn is what's too much for you and and to have your own boundaries within within your own ability you know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you have to do something. And that the, those boundaries being set are part of this experience for you so that you would get to the point where you said, okay, what do I have to do to stop this? What do I have to do so that I can not experience this right now? And, and we would also challenge you to look at the rest of your life as well to see what else is coming in that you haven't given a good boundary to. Just because you are available and you can be available doesn't mean you have to be available at any moment, any time, any day, all the time, night or day, you know. And that, that's part of, that's actually part of the awakening process is to, to reset your boundaries so that if your mission is to clear this stuff, great. But, you know, you also have to eat, sleep. You should be able to go out and have fun and do your things so that this isn't overwhelming you and, and you sound like you're as we listen to you much more overwhelmed by it than you should be so this is a little bit about you taking your power into a controlled situation so that when you want to sit down and clear some stuff great that's the perfect moment to do it but until then and until you're ready it has to wait it waited all the time before and now it comes it's like a it's like a river now it's time to put a to put a some a stop there for it so thank you thank you, thank you so much for your answer yeah yeah okay don next, you have a job next, i'm sorry yes, yes. Okay. our next person is lana hi lana hello lana yes good morning okay how are good we morning. on time how are we on time uh it's 10 02. okay all right go cool. okay. Hi, hi, Karen. Greetings, Theos. I just wanted to say, um, Theos and Karen become more and more distinguishable. As, that's as that's that's serving. true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I love we you both. Go and back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, uh, I know you mentioned that um, you're dedicating today to light workers. And mm -hmm. In that spirit, um, I wanted to. Um, ask you here, see if I can explain that well enough. Um, so um, I understand about love. I understand and I feel uh, people and the pain and the joys. Um, I think I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing I identified is that my own receiving mechanism, my own um, grid, is not there to fill in in terms of receiving love back from the spiritual world and um, um i don't know people call it neuro pathways or something due to my earlier experiences due to 
not really having to utilize that part. I, I never actually developed it, but I developed the the other part of it, which is external, but the feedback is not, um, I mean, it comes in, of course it comes in during certain times. And um, I just, I guess I want to cultivate it more. I want to um, tap into it more. And, and I almost have this vision of my um, higher self, just sort of like trying to, um, get through the density of my life and not able to do that. And I know that, that love is there and I know that I'm the only one who hasn't figured out something yet. But I guess I want to plant that garden in, in, in myself where the water can pour and the birds can come, where I can go at any moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, the first thing that, that we want to say to you and, and, you are love. You are, you know, when you feel love, what you're actually feeling is the truest part of you, the truest part of your nature. And so when you say that the, that you haven't cultivated the neuro pathways of it, um, we're going to simplify it because it's a very complicated way of thinking. It, because neuropathways are very mind minuscule and intricate and complex. And this is quite simple, um, that you are love and the resistance you have for experiencing love at this moment is a little bit of this not believing that that's true. Not believing that you really are who you really are, who we know you are, you know, and that's part of the discovery of awakening, but it's also the journey of the life into your knowing and to realize that that's who you are. And, and we say it like, oh, realize who you are and, and boom, 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 everybody just wakes up. It's really a process. So we've witnessed you with your son and we know your love for him you know yeah. and so the association that you make as far as that love you know you couldn't love him unless you were love so we're going to we're going to stop for one second because the dog is hearing a skateboarder and he he, he <laughs> doesn't okay. like it so let him we'll let the skateboarder pass so that the dog can get down off of his perch but so you wouldn't be able to love unless you were love you wouldn't be able to do it because nothing but love can give love nothing so how would you be able to do that if you weren't in fact love right and, and the, love right. Of the parent to the child is the purest love that is the god love that mm -hmm. that loves us you know nice. so, so you wouldn't be able to do that unless you were in fact love and so your the disconnect a little bit is this idea of i don't know how to receive love but matt khan always says this very beautifully so we're going to we're going to usurp his, his, or we're going to use his words. But he always says that the love that you are wanting, the words that you're waiting to hear, the feelings that you're waiting to get, those are the things that you have to say and give to yourself. Because if it's not coming from within you, if the knowing of your son has no doubt that, that you love him, so he can receive your love all the time. <laughs> Right? True, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So the doubt, the question is, in your growing up and in your experience, perhaps the doubt was, you know, do I, can I, where, where is this love coming from? So the doubt came because maybe you didn't experience love the way that you're showing love. Mm -hmm. you know? That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. So, well, we we've we've done this before, but so 
so what we what we would say to you is is much like we were saying to Salem about healing something it, and it's always the inner child it's always the small part of us because when you're a child you don't have the ability to know something is off you don't have the ability to know that it's not the way it should be because it's generally your first experience with something and whatever that experience is that you have that's what you take as truth right yes but, but you know now that mm -hmm. that's not right right mm -hmm. you know that's now true. that that time when you were sort of reaching out and wanting something and you weren't getting it back you're thinking oh maybe i'm bad or maybe i did something wrong or maybe i don't deserve it but that's not true but it was your impression because you had no other frame of reference and so you have you have um we want a good word that's it's powerful the word that you have encapsulated an idea that is based on falsity it's like you put a balloon that's filled with air as a as a truth and we want you to stick a pin in that balloon mentally and blow it up because that's not true what you experienced was on the recipient end of another being who at that moment also didn't know who they were Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why the, the sensitivity to pain is understood by me now because right. I can feel things that other people will right. not ever think about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we want to do a healing and then we know we're over time, but we, we don't we don't care. We're we're here to be here, so we're gonna be here for now. And and Celestian, anybody else who wants to do Celestian and Salem? There's too many S's names today for us. We're getting confused, but uh, we're, we're going to do this together and, and we're going to go and we're going to do a sort of inner child healing um, that's very standard in its execution. This is what we would say to you that whenever you can identify that thing with that one thing, you know, um, then that's what you need to heal. And we, we, we want to tell you how to find it. When you, when you identify the feeling, like you've identified this very complex conversation, this explanation of, I didn't receive love as, as a child at one moment, and I internalized that for some reason I don't deserve it and I don't know how to get it. Well, what happened is I didn't get it, so therefore I didn't learn how to receive it. So maybe there's something within me that's wrong. But we will always tell you, and, and we know it to be true, that there is nothing wrong what is forgotten and what has been falsely ingrained in you because of lack of understanding, because of lack of um, discernment in that one moment due to age and circumstance, mm -hmm. needs to be removed because it's not true. And we will also tell you that you create your own reality based on what you believe. So we want to change the belief. We want to change it to a belief that's really based in really who you are, as opposed to a false belief that's a balloon that's taking up a lot of space in your head that can just be popped and replace it with something, something. <laughs> new. Yeah. We're creator beings just like you. So, we want you to do this, and if you'll do it, if you if you're happy to do it, um, this experience right now, sort of on this webinar, we we'll, we will be happy to do it. But if not, if we, we would just want to keep it general, it's okay. But we like you to think back, and you don't have to share unless it's if it's too painful. But we want you to go back, and when you think about not getting that love in this moment or that moment, how how old were you? The first time that happened, the very first time, you remember? probably three, three. three year old. Okay, so in that three-year-old child, see you, see you in that moment, and for Salem, whatever it is for you, whatever age, we had gotten seven, but we think there's some four, 
years old things too for you and then maybe some other a little older but in that moment that and this can happen so many times let let us tell you that there's all kinds of traumas in your life but this is the way to solve them you find the moment that you believe that that happened and, and if it's not really exactly that moment it doesn't matter but whatever comes to your mind that's what your mind wants to give you and that's what is supposed to be healed so see yourself as that little tiny cute you know lana and her three-year-old self walking through the world you know yeah see mm -hmm. her and she's cute right she's beautiful she's yeah. lovely i've seen pictures <laughs> yeah so see her and i want you to go to your in your mind's eye and i want you to scoop her up and just scoop her up in your arms you know <sighs> Scoop her up so we so you hear her do that little beautiful child laugh where she laughs, you know, and do it right at the moment before this all happened. Mm -hmm. You know, do it to her. So right before this happened, this reaching out where you didn't get the love. Mm -hmm. And I want you to say to her, I love you. I am you and I love you. And I know now what's going to happen to you. But I'm going to be here with you in this very moment. But I want you to know that that you are beautiful and that you are amazing and you have your entire world laying out for you. And the stuff that you're going to learn later on, it's going to be everything that I'm using that's going to make me me. So give her a little tickle so she laughs again. And then set her down and stand right behind her so that she's leaning up against you. And allow that next moment to happen. And as that moment happens, hold her and say to her, you know what, no matter what you've experienced or what you're experiencing right now, I'm still here with you. And I want you to know that the person that is saying these things to you or doing these things to you can't hurt you ever again so let's let this moment pass and hold on to me and you're still going to be okay and i'm always going to love you and the love that you're wanting i'm giving it to you and you don't need it from anywhere else and you will always have it from me And just let that moment fade away. But see her held in your arms, always. When you think about the love that you need, see yourself held in your own arms. Because that's what our higher self is always doing for us. We just don't always remember. You know? So, you know, this is a healing moment. And this is what's always so beautiful, is later on, when this little girl grows up that has had a different experience now on a new timeline, she'll say to her friends, you know, when I was a little girl, I always had the image of this beautiful angel coming to me and holding me and giving me the love I always needed. And though maybe I didn't always get it from outside, I always had that angel there with me. But that's you. That's you healing you. That's what angels are a lot of the time. It's us going back to get ourselves really? yeah a lot of the time yeah because <laughs> who knows better mm. than us what we need exactly exactly i am understanding that better now yeah. um it's just like a dress it has to be custom made in order right. to be and perfect. you can always go to any point in your life that there was pain and you can go back there in that memory go back to that you know, it doesn't have to be a little child of you. It can be the, you know, the Lana from last week and go mm -hmm. back to her. But who else knows better than you what you need? You know, there was a moment, and this is very dramatic, and I want you to stay with this because I want to lighten it, this up a little bit. But there was a moment where um, I was driving, and, uh, and this is Karen talking, and, and I was driving, and... I was going to go over a bridge and as i was going up the bridge i got the information to just slow down and mm -hmm. i heard it like just slow down and i thought okay and so i slowed down and i heard slow way down and i thought okay 
this room. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? And I didn't really understand. But it was my voice in my head, which took me mm -hmm. years to understand this. And I actually got it in a channeling from Theo's when they were channeling for another person who they were explaining a situation. And so the voice said, slow way down. And I just went, okay. And I just did it without even thinking about it. And then I heard pull over. No, first I heard slow down to like five miles an hour. And so I thought, oh, okay. And I did. I slid down to five miles an hour. And then I heard pull over. Just pull over in the median and stop. This, this, I, I promise you this is true. And I pulled over in the median and I mm -hmm. stopped. Now, that's a weird thing to do, going up a bridge and you're starting to go around a curve and then you just pull into the median. But that's what I did. And the very moment I pulled in the median and stopped, coming the wrong way down the highway, down this exit, you know, was a car being chased by a police car at a very high speed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so I went, wow, well, isn't that something? <laughs> I just was pulled that, out. It was a good out. call. <laughs> but you know, that happened when I was about, I guess, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And it and I didn't know this until six months ago that that's what it was, that it was me, that it was me, that at some point on some timeline, I decided to go back to myself and save it's myself. True. So it felt so true. I was like, this is, that's exactly what it is. You know, the guardian angel that was out there for me was me. There was some part of me that had an awareness of multidimensionality multi that knew that this had happened. And maybe on some other timeline, it had actually happened with a, you know. So to create the new timeline, they went back and, and saved me. Wow. So, but that's what you can do for yourself that saving of me was a type of healing you know yes. but you can also heal yourself in any way that you need to and not only bring it into this now this now you've now you've changed your past your future can be different you bring with you the understanding of it but you've also created a timeline of alana that didn't have that feeling and so she is another jillion possibilities of life that she can have because we're multidimensional there's millions of us running around at any given time having many many experiences and then there's a part of you that just now went back there to her mm -hmm. to you to her to you so but you can do that and if there's things that need to heal and if this is what is percolating in yourself that you're believing that you can experience love i hope you don't believe that now but if there's still parts of you that believe it go back and get them mm. because the evidence that you have that you can experience love is because one first most importantly is you are love yes. you are love and that's just the default nature of us we are all that we are we are love we are so much love that we can even forget to be that we are love. We have so much love that we even give ourselves the, the experience to not even be love. And the second thing is, you know that you are love because love yes. comes out of you towards other wonderful it does. beings. It does. Yes. So it couldn't, what's inside you, if you shake a bottle of ketchup, you know, and inside the ketchup is, the ketchup is love. If you shake a bottle of love, ketchup, yes, yes, ginger ale doesn't come out, <laughs> right? That's true. I, I'm just having sometimes trouble refilling that bottle with more love, and I you don't like have to refill it because it's who you are. <laughs> There's a beautiful okay. mantra called it, it goes pur nam, and what it says is fullness. And so maybe instead of the word love, we're going to use the word fullness. And mm -hmm. within the fullness is only fullness. And when you take some of it away, what is left is fullness. fullness. You, mm -hmm. you don't run out of love. You love is not out. finite. You, it's not like you only have this much love. And when you give love, yeah. you have nothing left. You are that. You are so much that, that as much as you take away, you, you can't take away anything that is. Because there's two things what is in this entire universe the very fabric of everything is love 
Mm -hmm. So no matter how you slice into it, no matter what mm -hmm. you do, no matter what you are taking, creating, letting go, it's love in all of its many forms. I use it to raise my vibration. This is what does the best job for me. And uh, sometimes when the reflection of the outside world is telling me that something's off, I'm not tuning to what I want, then I, I feel like a little bit of that feeling of inspiration and, and, and I'm like, well, where, where can I get it from right now? Because I'm being bombarded by someone due to work or, or some other circumstance where I cannot avoid that conversation and I feel like it's taken over and I'm just grasping for something to get myself leveled again. Well, that's what we were talking about. Uh, this is back to Theos again. That's what we were talking about when we were talking to Salish, that the practice yeah. of going back every day. Yeah. And you know what? Everything that comes up is just another opportunity for you to look at yourself and go, okay, this is where there's, some, there's something that needs to be fixed here. There's something I need to let go of. There's something within mm -hmm. it's coming up for me. So yeah. in those moments that knock you out of alignment, your, yeah. job, your job in that moment is to get back in alignment, you know, and to know so many things, things though. Yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't, that's the process. There's no, you know, I don't know why, but humans have this uh, idea that they're done. They do it. Okay. I've put on the <laughs> spiritual clothes and now I'm spiritual. But you're a spiritual mm. being having a human experience and all of these things that are happening around you that pull on you are very human. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, mm -hmm. you're human. You're yes. having a human experience. But that, that, that's, why you, that's why you keep going back and you keep going back mm -hmm. and you keep going back. It's only the very enlightened masters that sit on the mountain and, you know, yeah. all the, it just rains, you know, golden light around them but the, these, these mm -hmm. don't do much they just sit there you know they're not walking around in the muck and the in the mm -hmm. in the grime every day and and they've cleaned their souls their auras their everything they're already there but mm -hmm. all of our jobs is to you know slowly mm -hmm. go there and try to get there but that's a lifetime yeah. of stuff don't don't uh don't uh diminish the, the life experience. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, ladies, we're yes. running a little late. Beautiful. We're running quite late, we're told, so we have to uh, <laughs> This is very addictive <laughs> to, to conversate with you. We, we love you, and we are very happy to have had this conversation with all of you beautiful, wonderful beings who are walking your path so, so committedly. And, and we, we are all cheering for you here. We know that everything you're experiencing, even if it's confounding, is just part of your process. So we hope that you will start to embrace more the, the gift that you're given when you're presented a challenge, because it's just always an opportunity to clear something. And, you know, for Michelle, her channeling's just beginning. And, and, and for everybody else, your, your life is, is just evidence that you are moving forward. Every challenge that comes that is keeping you from reaching who you want to be is only there. It's just another block to be, to be moved out of the way. But it wouldn't even present itself if it wasn't if you weren't on your path. That's what we're trying to tell you. So keep keep going, and and we will talk to you very very soon. We love you very much. So blessings and namaste. Namaste. We love you. Namaste. We love you too, Theos. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay. You're right. It's getting harder to uh, distinguish the difference for me as well. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I think that's it. Thank Don. you so much, Karen. Thank you, Don. Thank you. We apologize Thanks. for uh, keeping you over time. But okay. to everyone, um, next week we're going to have a very special uh, 
we're going to have a very special guest and you'll see the announcements going out um, Monday or Tuesday next week. So Jim is still sick. So if everyone can, uh, just before we go, just send some healing energy to him. He's getting over a uh, chest infection uh, and he's taking some help from uh, some doctors, but we can also send him energetic help. So we love you, Jim, and we send you healing and love. Okay. Uh, check the website, hucalo.org, for all the information on everything that's coming up on Human Colony. Um, the Human Colony workshop from August 16th through the 21st uh, is now taking all of its applicants. You can sign up and find all the information there. So, namaste. See you next time. Thank you so much for your love and support.